Good afternoon and welcome. I am Becky Kaiser. I'm the administrative captain here at the Oshkosh Police Department. On behalf of Chief Dean Smith, I welcome you to our 2022 Law Enforcement Memorial Ceremony. Thank you to the community members, to our officers, and to the Honor Guard for your commitment and dedication to the community and this department. I would like to at this time extend a special welcome to City Manager Mark Roloff, District Attorney Eric Sparr, Oshkosh Police Fire Chief Mike Stanley, our brothers from the fire department that have joined us, also any retired police, military, and veterans that are among us today. We are here today to recognize and honor the three Oshkosh police officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty during the history of this department. In addition, we are here to recognize and honor the Wisconsin law enforcement officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty since our last memorial ceremony that was held in 2019. Nationwide in 2021, there were 617 line of duty related deaths in law enforcement. To begin our ceremony, the Oshkosh Police Auxiliary Honor Guard will post colors. Uniform personnel, present, park. Post colors. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order! Heart! At this time, I'll invite Pastor Clint Laird, who will come forward and give the invocation for today's ceremony. Please join with me in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together to remember those who have given their lives in service to your people and to your nation. I ask that you would bless those gathered here today. I ask that you would give these speakers the right words to speak. I thank you for this day. We thank you for our police who selfishly serve the people of Oshkosh, who represent law and order and know, and we know that you have placed them into their positions. I pray that you would use them for your glory. I thank you for the many guests that you have brought here today. I pray that they would be an encouragement to this police department. And I pray that they would render to them the honor and respect that they deserve. Amen. At this time, I'll invite Chief Dean Smith to please come forward and say a few words about what this week has come to mean for law enforcement. Good afternoon, and thank you once again for being here to help us as we honor those who, who have gone before us and made the ultimate sacrifice. I once again would like to thank each of you for joining us today here at the Oshkosh Police Department. Today we remember and honor our officers here in Oshkosh, officers in Wisconsin, as well as all officers nationwide who have offered the supreme sacrifice while serving their community. It is also a time to recognize the ongoing commitment of our officers who, every day, put on their badge, not knowing if, they may be the, if this may be their last day, sacrificing themselves and their families to the community that they serve. It has been two years since we've gathered to honor those who have fallen. This time we now have officers who have fallen in the line of duty due to an unforeseen tragedy by losing their lives to complications after contracting COVID. The profession that we have committed ourselves to is no less a challenge to our safety now than it was many years ago. 
We gather to recognize all those who woke up one day and never came home again. We gather to pay honor to the families who were left behind. We gather to remind the community of the sacrifices our officers make. Here in Oshkosh, three officers have died in the line of duty, three lives taken too soon, three families forever changed. Over the last three years, nine Wisconsin police officers have died in the line of duty. This is nine too many. I want to share with you some sobering facts that were provided by FBI Director Christopher Wray recently. Director Ray shared that the murder of police officers rose 59% in 2021. The total murder rate across the country rose only 29%. In 2021, 73 police officers were murdered. That is a rate of nearly one every five days. That means more than one a week, one every 120 hours. The National Fraternal Order of Police announced in April that the shooting of police officers have spiked so far in 2022 by 43%. As of April 1st of this year, 101 police officers have been shot. Why is that? Why does it have to be a thing that we have to count these? Why is it that we have to hope and pray that a police officer survives? Why is it that we have to prepare for the worst and hope for the best? I believe that it's because police officers cannot stand by and let others become victims. We will throw ourselves into harm's way, putting our lives and the well-being of our families in jeopardy each day. We will suffer the hateful looks from those who wish to do us harm simply because of the uniform that we wear and the rule of law that we represent. At the end of the shift, we will quietly rejoice that we survived another workday. I have shared with you the numbers of the known tragedies that have occurred. But what are the unforeseen damages that's done to our officers that doesn't manifest itself for some, t some years later? How many of us share stories of our past and our career that others are shocked to hear and we are so desensitized that the feeling of shock from violence is lost on us, no longer affecting us? Why does this have to be normal? When one of us falls, we do what, we call, what we're called to do to honor that officer. We will go to the funeral, we will salute that officer, we may shed a tear for the family. Quietly, we all in our own minds, in the dark corners of our thoughts, place ourselves in that officer's shoes, wondering about the loved ones we leave behind, wondering about the joys that life can bring that would no longer be ours to share with our families, the pain that our loved ones will feel. You know, I hope to never hand a folded flag to a loved one of one of our officers. However, if that day should come, we as a department, we will collectively come together and wrap our arms around each other and the officer's family, and we'll be strong for each other, strong for the family. We will honor the officer, protect the family, and always remember the sacrifice that was made, just as we are doing today. Officers every day and night place themselves in peril you see, each of you here in law enforcement understand that during your shift, it is not the immediate danger or traumatic experiences that always impact you. It is also the anticipation of these events that dramatically change us over time. As officers, we must always be vigilant and watching out for our fellow brothers and sisters. We must show compassion to the citizens that we serve. Compassion is characterized by a willingness to purposely assist others on an emotional level and to selflessly put the needs of others before yourself without expecting anything in, in return. We must guard against the slow erosion of compassion. Those in official and unofficial leadership roles must ensure that our citizens receive the highest degree of care that we can provide. This isn't always easy, but it's what we must do. Once again, over this past year, I have seen moments where our police officers have been there to save lives have rose to greatness in the performance of their duties. My challenge to each of you in law enforcement today is to not let these numbers and st statistics deter you from doing your job to the best of your ability. Do not let the chatter of a select few who would wish to tear us down discourage you. Hold your head high. Wear your uniform with pride. Serve our citizens honorably and know that your fellow officers as well as our great citizens here in Oshkosh are here for you to pick you up when you're down, 
and brush the dirt from your uniform that society sometimes tries to place on it. Continue to serve our community just as you have. Do not be discouraged by others. Remember those who have gone before you and honor their memory by your professionalism. As a memorial to those who have fallen, I believe we still wear our badge. We who still wear our badge must find the shining light in our profession. We must celebrate the good that we have before us each day. I believe that our society is once again realizing the value each of you hold to our citizens. Our citizens care about us. They are champions for us. We need to embrace every opportunity to create a positive interaction with our community, never letting an opportunity to be our best get lost in complacency. We should seek out those moments where we are able to shine our best, demonstrating to everyone how professional that we are. Taking the opportunity to thank our community for the care that they give us on a regular basis. To our officers, I am proud of each of you. As we honor those officers who have fallen over the last couple of years, find a way to honor these officers' legacy with acts of professionalism and compassion to the community that we serve. Thank you for being the best that you can be. Thank you. will now be read in recognition and honor of the law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty. The following are the Oshkosh police officers that were killed in the line of duty throughout the history of this department. Oshkosh police officer Lewis Hardy. Officer Hardy was shot and killed on July 28, 1890 after arresting an intoxicated man for fighting in a tavern. As the man was being escorted to jail, he pulled out a, revol a revolver and shot Officer Hardy three times. The suspect was convicted of Officer Hardy's murder and sentenced to life in prison. Officer Oshkosh Police Officer George O'Connor. Officer O'Connor was killed in a motorcycle accident on July 23, 1922, while on a routine patrol. His motorcycle collided with another vehicle at the intersection of Pearl Avenue and Light Street. Officer O'Connor had served with the Oshkosh Police Department for 10 years and was survived by his wife. Oshkosh Police Officer Walter Spearing. Officer Spearing was killed in a motorcycle accident on July 19, 1939, while on routine patrol. His motorcycle struck another vehicle that was pulling out into the street from the curb. Officer Spearing was 29 years old at the time of his death. The following is the honor roll of officers in Wisconsin that died in the line of duty since 2019. Milwaukee Police Officer Matthew J. Rittner. Officer Rittner was shot and killed as he executed a narcotics and firearm related search warrant at a home in the 2900 block of South 12th Street near West Dakota Street in Milwaukee on February 6, 2019. As the tactical enforcement unit attempted to breach the apartment door, the suspect opened fire with an AK-47, shooting through the door and striking Officer Rittner in the chest. He was transported to Frederick Hospital where he died from his injuries. The subject who shot him was taken into custody at the scene. He was charged with first degree intentional homicide and numerous other narcotics and weapons charges. He was sentenced to life without parole. Officer Rittner was a U.S. Marine Corps veteran of the War on Terror. He had served with the Milwaukee Police Department for 17 years and is survived by his expectant wife and child. Racine Police Officer John D. Hetland. Officer Hetland, who was off duty, was shot and killed while intervening in an armed robbery at 9.40 p.m. on June 17, 2019 in Racine. He observed the robbery occurring outside of a bar at 1936 Lathrop Avenue and took immediate police action. The subject opened fire, fatally wounding him. He then fled the scene and remained at large before being captured 10 days later. The man was charged with first degree intentional homicide, armed robbery, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Officer Hetland had served with the Racine Police Department for 24 years and was preparing for his retirement. He is survived by his two children and his parents. 
Milwaukee Police Officer Mark S. Lenz. Officer Mark Lenz succumbed to his injuries sustained on August 3, 2017, when his police motorcycle was intentionally struck by another vehicle as he attempted to stop a car near the intersection of North 27th Street and West Clybourne Street. The teenage driver and another individual had been committing robberies prior to being pulled over. Both vehicles fled the scene after the collision. The teenage driver who slammed Officer Lenz with his SUV was sentenced to six years. Officer Lenz suffered traumatic brain injury and died from complications on September 18, 2019. He served with the Milwaukee Police Department for 18 years and is survived by his wife, son, and three grandchildren. 2020 Honor Roll, Dane County Sheriff's Deputy Richard Charles Treadwell. Deputy Sheriff Rick Treadwell died August 22, 2022, as a result of contracting COVID-19 in a presumed exposure while on duty. Deputy Treadwell had served with the Dane County Sheriff's Office for 25 years and was assigned to the Dane County Law Enforcement Training Center. He is survived by his wife and three children. 2021 Honor Roll, Correctional Officer Daniel L. Craybaum. Correctional Officer Dan Craybaum died from injuries sustained from a fall while working tower duty at the Red Granite Correctional Institution on April 25, 2021. Officer Craybaum fell from the hatch to the landing at the base of the stairs on April 22, 2021. He was found unconscious by his co-workers when they could not reach him by radio. He was transported to Theta Clark Hospital where he succumbed to his injuries three days later. He had served with the Wisconsin Department of Corrections for 20 years and is survived by his wife, three sons, and a grandson. Fond du Lac Police Officer Joseph Kerr. Police Officer Joseph Kerr died from complications as a result of contracting COVID-19 in the line of duty on August 2, 2021. He was a United States Army veteran and served with the Fond du Lac Police Department for three years. He is survived by his wife, two children, parents, and a sister. Beloit Police Officer Daniel J. Daly. Police Officer Daniel J. Daly died as a result of contracting COVID-19 in the line of duty on November 15, 2021. Police Officer Daly had served with the Beloit Police Department for 24 years and is survived by his wife. Wisconsin State Master Trooper Daniel A. Stainbrook. Master Trooper Daniel Stainbrook died from complications as a result of contracting COVID-19 in the line of duty on November 15, 2021. Master Trooper Stainbrook had served with the Wisconsin State Patrol for 20 years and was assigned to the North Central Region Wausau Post. He is survived by his wife and two children. Wisconsin Department of Military Affairs Officer Chad P. Christensen. Officer Chad Christensen died from complications as a result of contracting COVID-19 in the line of duty while working at 100 Independence Drive in Camp Douglas on December 18, 2021. Officer Christensen had served with the Wisconsin Department of Military Affairs Volk Field Security Forces for two years and was deputized by the Juneau County Sheriff's Office. He is survived by his parents and two brothers.
Firing party. Fire three volleys. At this point, I'll ask Pastor Laird to come back up for the benediction to close the ceremony, followed by the retiring of the colors. Let us close with a prayer. Father, we thank you. Father, we acknowledge that there is no authority except from you, and that you have given us, as a governing authority, the police. We thank you for them. We thank you for the officers of the Oshkosh Police Department. We thank you for the officers in our nation, both serving now and those who have served in the past, those who have fallen in service for your people. They are yours, and they serve you for your good. We thank you for those officers who have selflessly given their lives for us. As your word says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. We acknowledge their sacrifice as an expression of their love. Love for their families, love for their community, and love for their nation. Lord, I pray for the families of the fallen. I pray that you, as the Father of all mercies and the God of all comfort, would comfort and care for them. I pray for these officers, living and serving now, I pray that you would set a hedge of protection about them, carry them home safely after each shift, bear them up on wings of eagles as they each day battle the force of wickedness in our land. We praise you. Amen. Color Guard, retire the colors. Uniform personnel, breeze and march.